Hello, recruit, and welcome to Ashneer Academy 105, where we're going to take a look at different tier sizes of objects you can create, augments for your train tool, and printing each object. There are four tier sizes for all objects in Ashneer. Tier 1 is easily identified as one single attachment or storage slot. Tier 2 attachment slots are identified as a pair of Tier 1 slots surrounded by a red outline. Tier 2 attachment slots can hold two Tier 1 objects or a single Tier 2 object. Tier 3 attachment slots appear as a pair of Tier 2 slots. These can hold four Tier 1 objects, two Tier 2 objects, or a single Tier 3 object. Finally, Tier 4 attachment slots appear as a pair of Tier 3 slots. They can hold 8 Tier 1 objects, 4 Tier 2 objects, 2 Tier 3 objects, or 1 Tier 4 object. There are also two special types of attachment slots. The first, reaction slots, will appear on a few different platforms and storage objects, and they act differently than normal slots. When an astroneer or certain items pass through the object containing a reaction slot, this will cause it to activate whatever is connected to that reaction slot. For example, if you pass through an extra large arch platform with lights connected to it, the lights will turn off or on. Or you can attach fireworks to a large heat platform B, and those fireworks will be activated when you pass through the hoop. The other type of special attachment slot appears as a hologram and is a visual indication of resources that the object can interact with. Printers, for example, will display a hologram of all resources required to craft the object that you have selected on the printer control panel. And generators will display a hologram for the required fuel resource. Various platforms will provide a differing number and arrangement of attachment slots, and we'll look at those in just a moment. But before we do, let's take a look at which printers create which size objects. Everything you craft from your backpack will be a Tier 1 object that falls into one of three categories. Widgets, items, and augments. Widgets are special items that you can carry on your backpack that can be activated when attached to the shoulder slots of your backpack. This includes the portable oxygenator, which supplies oxygen but consumes a great deal of power, the work light and floodlight, jetpacks, jump jets, small camera, small trumpet horn, probe scanner, and more. Power producers will provide power to recharge your backpack when attached to the shoulder slots or one of the augment slots on your train tool. Batteries, however, can be stored anywhere on your backpack and will provide power to recharge it. Augments can be carried anywhere on your backpack, but they are only functional when attached to one of the three slots on your terrain tool. Drill mod augments allow you to drill through increasingly harder terrain. The narrow and wide mod can decrease or increase the area that you can terraform, respectively, while the boost mod will increase the speed of the terrain tool. The inhibitor mod allows you to collect raw resources from the surface of a planet without actually digging into the soil. And the terrain analyzer will store a specific terrain color and allow you to use it to paint other terrain to that color. It will also limit the terrain tool to terraforming only terrain of the corresponding stored color. The alignment mod allows you to create flat surfaces and its function is going to vary based upon where the reticule is located in relation to your camera. If you are facing the ground, you'll dig down in a straight line. If you're in build mode, you'll build up in a straight line if your backpack has a canister containing soil. Wall mode can be used when you're facing the horizon and it'll create a flat surface resembling a wall. And flat mode will create a flat surface relative to where the terrain tool is aimed. Each of these augments require power to operate, however, and they can quickly drain your backpack's battery. The inhibitor mod will consume 0.2 units per second. The drill mod 1 will consume 0.25 units per second. The narrow, wide, and alignment mods, along with the drill mod 2 and the terrain analyzer, all consume 0.5 units per second, while the boost mod and drill mod 3 consume 0.75 units per second. You can toggle augments off when not needed by opening your backpack, extending the terrain tool, and then selecting the augment you want to toggle. If you need it again later, you can simply toggle it back on. This can save you a lot of time since you won't have to move augments on and off of the terrain tool. There are several other items that can be created from your backpack printer as well. One key item that is unlocked from the very beginning is the soil canister. You can craft it on your backpack from a single resin. Keep it attached to your backpack and you'll gather soil in your canister as you excavate. That soil can be used with your terrain tool when you're building or flattening. It can also be added to the soil centrifuge allowing you to create 
create several raw resources. We'll take a closer look at the soil centrifuge in Astroneer Academy 202. Another key item that you can print from your backpack is the small printer. The small printer can craft tier 2 objects, and that's where your very first platforms and storage items will be crafted. The small printer quickly comes into its own when you realize that it is used to create the first land vehicles, as well as attachments such as drills and pavers for those vehicles. It is also where you can create some of the better rated power producers, and even where thrusters for shuttles come from. While still packaged, most items crafted on the small printer can be carried in your backpack or stored on other Tier 1 slots, and when they are unpacked, they become Tier 2 objects. And of course, the small printer is where you can craft the medium printer. The medium printer is where you'll create most of the objects that are essential to building a fully operational base. Several of these Tier 3 objects are required if you really wish to make much progress as an astroneer. You'll find the research chamber, smelting furnace, soil centrifuge, trade platform, and more. We'll be taking a closer look at the trade platform in our next course, Astroneer Academy 106, when we discuss everything related to scrap. While still packaged, items crafted on the medium printer can be stored on any Tier 2 slot. The medium printer is where you will also craft the final printer we'll take a look at, the large printer. The large printer can craft tier 4 objects. Huge platforms and storage options are available here. You can craft all three shuttles on the large printer, along with a large rover. And if you wish to make shelters for new habitats on other planets, the large printer has it. And while they're still packaged, items crafted on the large printer can be stored on any tier 3 slot. If you ever somehow forget which printer corresponds to which research catalog tab, just pay close attention to the icons above each printer. The tooltips above those printers are unique and they correspond to the same icon within the research catalog. It is simply not within the scope of today's course to cover each printable object in depth, though we will be looking at most of them throughout the remaining National Year Academy courses. Also, we have already discussed all the power producers and power storage items back in National Year Academy 103. If you would like a bit of extracurricular reading, be sure to visit the National Year Wiki link in the description down below, where you can discover the use for every single item that you can craft, along with the research bite cost and resources required to craft them. For the remainder of today's course, we're going to take a look at all of the platforms and storage options available. Platforms and storage come in three sizes, medium, large, and extra large, and they will feature a various combination of slots and power cables. Medium objects will be crafted on the small printer, large objects will be crafted on the medium printer, and extra large objects are crafted on the large printer. That may sound confusing at first, but remember that most of these items will be packaged when printed, and a packaged item is always smaller while it's still packaged than when it's unpacked. So let's begin with all the platforms. There are a total of five medium platforms. The medium platform A is unlocked from the very beginning and requires one resin to print. It features four power cables, with one on each side, and a single tier 2 slot. Medium platform B costs 250 bytes to unlock and requires two resin to print it. It too features four power cables and has one tier 2 slot and two tier 1 slots. The medium platform C will require 400 bytes and it's crafted from one resin. It only has three power cables and a single tier 2 slot. The tall platform will cost 1000 bytes and it is crafted from one copper. It has three power cables and four tier 1 slots angled slightly downward and one tier 2 slot at the very top. The medium T platform requires 1,500 bytes, and it is crafted from two plastic. It features three power cables and two tier two slots at right angles to one another, with one of those slots being raised slightly above the other one. That brings us to the seven large platforms. The large platform A is unlocked from the very beginning and requires two resin to print. It features four power cables with one on each side and a single tier three slot. The large platform B will cost 500 bytes to unlock and requires three resin. It also has four power cables and features two tier two slots and a single tier three slot. Large platform C has a byte cost of 2,500 and will need three iron to craft. It includes four power cables, 20 tier 1 slots, and a single tier 3 slot. The large T platform costs 4,000 bytes, and it is crafted from one aluminum alloy and two plastic. It has three power cables and two tier 3 slots at right angles to one another, with one raised slightly higher than the other one. The large hoop platform A has a byte cost of 4,000, and will require one aluminum alloy, one copper, and one ceramic. It only has two power cables and six tier one reaction slots. Remember, reaction slots are activated when a marble, recreational sphere, or a national year passes through the loop. Large hoop platform B requires 6,000 bytes to unlock and is printed using one aluminum alloy, one steel, and one copper. 
It has four power cables, six tier one reaction slots, and two tier two regular slots. And the large curve platform has a bike cost of 4,500, and it requires one aluminum alloy, one ceramic, and one iron to craft. It features four power cables and a single tier three slot. And rounding out the lineup, we have the extra large platforms. The extra large platform A has a bike cost of 2,000, and it requires two iron and two ceramic to craft it. It includes a whopping eight power cables and a single tier four slot. Extra large platform B will cost 3,000 bytes, and you'll need four iron to print it. It features four power cables and 10 tier two slots arranged on angle in two rows of five slots each. The extra large platform Z requires 5,000 bytes and it is crafted from two iron and two steel. Despite its size, it only features four power cables. It does, however, offer two tier three slots and one tier four slot. And finally, the extra large curve platform requires 7,500 bytes and it is printed using one aluminum alloy, one steel, and two titanium. It is equipped with four power cables, a single tier two slot, and two tier three slots. There are three other platforms in the extra large section, but they're grouped into their own category within the research catalog, and we'll discuss them further in Ashton Academy 303. Moving on to storage, we have three medium storage options. You begin with the medium storage unlocked, and it requires two resin to craft it, and it has eight tier one slots. It can also be toggled between collapsed and expanded configurations. The medium storage silo has a cost of 3,000 bytes, and it requires two titanium, and it features 24 tier one slots. The tall storage only requires 400 bytes, and it is crafted from one ceramic. This one kind of clearly resembles a light pole and features three tier one slots with two on one side angled downward. The large storage has a cost of 2000 bytes and it would require three ceramic to print and it features four tier two slots. The large storage silo A requires 5000 bytes and three aluminum alloy to craft it and it has eight tier two slots. The large storage silo B will cost 7,500 bytes. It's crafted from three steel and it features 12 tier two slots. The large storage ring has a byte cost of 2,500 and it requires one aluminum alloy and two ceramic and it features six tier one reaction slots. It is also the only large storage item that can slot into a tier two space while all other large storage options require a tier three slot. And finally, the extra large storage has a 2,000 byte cost and requires two plastic and two ceramic and it includes 31 tier one storage slots across its unique dome. So with all of these platforms and storage options available, how do you best make use of them? We already know that we have four different tier sizes of objects available. Platforms of varying sizes all have their own unique combination of tier slots. But did you know that you can combine some storage items together with platforms and even other storage items? Early in Astroneer's history, the best combination of storage was placing a medium storage on top of a large storage or other platform. With four medium storage attached to a large storage, you get a massive increase in the number of objects or resources that you can store. Instead of being limited to just eight tier one items, you could now store 32. Granted, you couldn't store any tier two objects on the medium storage, but this did create a lot of extra storage space without occupying a lot of physical space. Later updates have introduced several new platforms and storage options. It didn't take long to discover that you can place a dozen medium storage silos onto a large storage silo B, increasing the total number of tier one storage slots from 24 all the way up to 288. Pack two of those large storage silos into a large shuttle, and you've increased the storage space in that shuttle from 16 tier one slots all the way up to 576. Since Astroneer Academy is a project made by the community, for the community, several people joined together to create just a few examples of the nearly limitless ways that you can combine storage and platforms together. Big thank yous go out to Gina, Ice Dragon, Boyneless, and Xenobite for taking the time to put all of these together. The combinations available to mix and match platforms and storage options are only limited by your imagination and they give you a massive choice of options when you are considering how you wish to store, organize, or transport items and resources. Whether making functional storage in production areas for a base, 
creating your name in lights, setting up a power station, or simply trying to sear everyone's retinas with lighting overkill, you can do pretty much whatever you set your mind to with the versatile storage options and platforms in Astroneer. Our next course will be the final one in the first semester of Astroneer Academy. Course 106 will take a deep dive into scrapping items and wreckage, what each shredder can be used for, and the economics of using scrap to trade for resources. Until then, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.